Picture this. Day 47 since the grid collapsed. The convenience stores are picked clean, the rivers shimmer with that special radioactive green you only see in nightmares, and the rain, oh, the rain burns holes in your jacket. Your throat feels like you've been gargling sand, your lips are cracking like old leather, and that puddle by the overturned bus is starting to look refreshing. Stop! Put down that irradiated pond scum. We're about to turn garbage and basic chemistry into something that won't melt your organs from the inside out. First up, the solar still. This is for when the sun still works. You're going to dig a hole, about three feet wide, two feet deep, or until you hit moisture, bodies, or regret. Place whatever nasty water you found in a container at the bottom. Could be urine, could be that green river sludge, could be the mystery liquid from that abandoned grocery store. Doesn't matter. Chemistry doesn't judge. Now stretch clear plastic over the hole, a shower curtain, greenhouse plastic, hell, even those body bags from the hospital if you're desperate enough. Seal the edges with rocks and dirt. Make it airtight. Place a small rock in the center so the plastic dips down, forming a funnel that points at your collection cup. Here's where science becomes your friend. The sun heats your toxic soup and water evaporates, but only the H2O molecules rise. All that irradiation, bacteria, and whatever else was swimming in there is too heavy. It stays behind like a bad relationship. The vapor hits the plastic, condenses, and drips into your cup. Eight hours later, you've got water so clean you could cry, if you had the moisture to spare. Method two, the boil and catch. For when you've got fire but no patience. Find a pot, find another pot, find some tubing. A garden hose, copper pipes ripped from a dead house, medical tubing from that clinic nobody talks about anymore. Connect them. One pot holds your nightmare water, the other stays empty and cold. Light a fire under the contaminated pot. As it boils, steam travels through your makeshift tube into the cold pot where it condenses back into water. The nasties? They're having a party in the first pot too, too heavy to join the steam's escape plan. If you're fancy, coil your tube and run it through cold water or snow. Faster condensation, more water, less waiting to die of thirst. Method three, the cloth filter tower. For the truly desperate, no plastic, no pots, welcome to the bottom of the survival ladder. Stack containers, bottles, cans, skulls if you're a theatrical. Fill the top one with your suspect water. Now string cloth between each level. Torn shirts, socks that have seen better decades, that flag nobody salutes anymore. Add layers, sand from the playground, charcoal from last night's fire, gravel from what used to be a parking lot. Each layer catches different sizes of death particles. The cloth wicks water down while trapping the bigger chunks of apocalypse. It won't catch viruses, but it'll handle the chunks, the grit and most bacteria if you find some iodine tablets to add at the end. Here's the science keeping you alive. Water molecules are tiny, nimble escape artists. When heated, they break free from their contaminated prison, leaving salts, metals, and most biological nightmares behind. Distillation doesn't care if your source water came from a toilet or a toxic waste dump. Physics is physics. Steam is just H2O having a solo career, leaving the band of contaminants behind. That condensation process? That's just steam getting cold and remembering how to be liquid again. Like your hopes, but useful. Every drop that forms on that plastic or drips from that tube is water in its purest form. No radiation, no cholera, no mysterious green tinge. Three days without water and your organs start shutting down like a mall after Black Friday. But with these methods, you're drinking cleaner water than most people had before the world went sideways. Sure, it tastes like survival and broken dreams, but it won't kill you. That first sip of distilled water after days of thirst is better than any vintage wine that's now just broken glass in a burned out liquor store. Your kidneys stop screaming, your blood stops turning to syrup, and suddenly tomorrow seems possible again. No fancy filters, no miracle tablets, no begging at the gates of whatever warlord controls the last water tower. Just you, some trash, basic physics, and the kind of stubborn refusal to die that got humans this far in the first place. The water's clear, your mind's sharp, and somewhere in the distance, another survivor just spotted your smoke signal. Time to boil more water. Company's coming, or worse, they're not.